Welcome, everybody. This is Games Over Plastic, episode number 12, the podcast, which is for the agnostic gamers. No console wars, just fun over here, as you guys know. I am Midnight. As always, I am joined by the two most Chad, most awesome co-hosts in the industry. First, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the Lord of Summer, the man who's playing his favorite JRPG series of all time right now, the brand new game, and floating in his pool. And just, I'm jealous, honestly. Sean Mason, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great, yeah. Um, enjoying my summer, playing a lot of games, a lot of JRPGs. Got a haircut, getting ready for the Hawaii trip. But yeah, enjoying life. Have a half marathon on Wednesday, so should be a good time. Ah, yeah. very cool, very cool. Can't wait to hear how that goes. You're going to crush it, I know. Hopefully. All right. Last but not least, we have the Lord of Graphics, the Master of Graphics, the man who's down here fixing your air conditioning. Hodge, I know you're worn out. Thanks for being with us as always. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm tired. It was a long week, but I, I you uh you could I know I look like Cog, but you confused me for him when you called me Lord instead of Master. So I, I caught that. But yeah, just happy to be here and talk about some sports games repping a sports hat for the for the episode so let's do it yes sir that's right in honor of the greatest game of all time midnight's game of the year college football 25 is coming out for those of you that don't know it's coming out on the 19th of this month with early access starting on the 16th if you're a game pass ultimate subscriber like myself then that means you have ea access ea plus whatever they call it and that gives you a 10 hour free trial, which starts on the 16th as well. So you can play early. I'll be playing early the 10 hour free trial. I'm so excited. And in honor of that momentous occasion happening, we thought we would get together and discuss our favorite and the best because our opinion is obviously canon sports games of all time. So that's what this episode is all about. We're going to be talking about our favorite sports games of all time. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, soccer, tennis, golf, etc. It's going to be a great episode. As always, listeners, thank you guys so much for listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to leave a like rating. Leave comments down below. Um, let us know what you're thinking of the show. Any suggestions, any questions, stuff like that. Uh, somebody had actually wrote in to me and said that they wanted us to do write-ins. and like yeah, Shout out to read. Ricky. Shout out to Ricky. Good, yeah, Ricky. Good guy. Lives, lives in Maine. Good guy. Yeah, shout, shout out to Ricky in Maine. He wanted us to do write-ins. So my question is this for you, the listeners out there, do you guys want us to do write-ins um, and like read your questions on air? Let us know in the comments, go in the comment section of the YouTube. Let us know if that's something you want us to do. And if it is, if you have a write-in or a question or something you want us to talk about, put it in the comments, we'll read it. And if it's good, or we want to talk about it, or we like it, we, you know, who knows, maybe on episode 13 or 14, you'll hear your question. Or you're right. And so let us know. Um, but yeah, this podcast is available on audio platforms everywhere. As we always say, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Everycast, right? Also on YouTube with video and graphics. Check the link in the audio description if you're listening there. And it goes right to the YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the boring administrative stuff. Let's get into some video games, shall we, gentlemen? Woo! Woo. All right. So let's go ahead and start as we like to do with what we are playing right now. And we're going to go ahead and pass it off to the Blackhawks fan. Is that the Blackhawks? I think it is. I'm not a yeah, hockey it guy. Is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Hodge, what's going on with you? What are you playing, sir? Uh, so, yeah, as we discussed last week when we were doing our uh, favorite or most excited games of the second half of the year, we talked about uh, Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. So I was talked about how I'm also excited for that, even though it's on Sean's list. And so I thought, oh, crap, I should go back and play the, well, you know, obviously it's a sequel kind of to Link's Awakening. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go, I bought it when it came out, but I just never played it. I think I was in school or something, I can't remember, but I didn't have time, so I didn't play it. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna, I stuck my word and I went to play it. And I am loving this game. It is, it won, it is beautiful. It looks like you're looking down on like a claymation village or like you said, a diorama. It, it's such a gorgeous game. And it, I love it because it's that old school simplistic where it's just like, 
you kind of get your power and you learn how to like, like once you get a strength bracelet, you can move the rocks and stuff like that. So it's like one of those where it's the same level, but you can always find a new area. Isn't that basically what Metroidvanias are? Is you, it gives you the ability to go back to areas and uh, go where you couldn't go before, whatever, once you upgrade. But so I really love that gameplay and this game. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just a cute, fun little game. And it's, I won't lie. It is that also old school where it doesn't give you much of a clue of what you have to do. So <laughs> I've, I've had to look up where I go next a couple times, but I'm, I'll admit it. But uh, other than that, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really loving this game. Yeah, a lot of that with uh, Link's Awakening is a lot of that is you just you just to talk to like all the NPCs, and if you mm-hmm. don't talk to them, like you have like no idea what you're doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you're loving it though. Yeah, I'm I'm not too far in. I'm currently I have the Chain Chomp. I uh, uh, I I have, I have the Chain Chomp that I saved from the people who captured it, and the lady keeps saying like take him for a walk. I'm like okay, so I'm letting him follow me around and eating all the enemies and stuff, and it's like. I answer the phone. It's like, take him to the swamp. And he, he likes eating those flowers. And so I keep taking him there and he keeps eating them. And then I bring her back. He's like, take him for a walk. I'm like, when is this over? And so I'm kind of stuck right now at that because I'm trying to go talk to other people. I'm like, get that thing away from me. And like, so they won't talk to me until I finish the chain chomp thing, but I can't figure out how to finish it. <laughs> um, how do you like the addition? How there's like so many like weird, like, like, um, just like, pieces of like mario in the game because yeah the there's chomp. the yeah there's the ghosts um, in the in the the cemetery yeah. um what was it oh it turns 2d when you go underground and there's the the goombas walking around yeah yep. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I have you it. found wart yet have you found wart yet no i you don't know, think wart so. from super you know super mario bros 2 wart like the giant toad thing oh yeah the giant like frog <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's he makes a cameo in the game. Like it's Uh-oh. just like it's nothing. That's not like a spoiler or anything. Yeah, it's not yeah. like he's like a boss, right? But yeah, there's a cameo. And it's so funny that there's like so many random Mario references. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it. But yeah, it's, I don't have too much to say. I'm not too far into it. But yeah, I'm really loving it. it it's a beautiful game and it, and it plays really well. So I, it's making me really also more excited because I, as a pr- platform person, doing the platforming puzzle with um. With Zelda is going to be a lot of fun, probably compared to this one. But so I actually think I might enjoy that one better. But I am really loving this game. All right, so Link's Awakening. What what system is that on? Nintendo Switch. Switch. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought was that like a 3DS game that they ported over, or is it? It was no, a it was Super a... Nintendo game. No, it was oh, a Game wow. Boy. It was a Game Boy game. Oh, that's right. It was a Game Boy. It was that's a game right. Game Boy game, and then they uh, redid it again, and like seven years later. And made it Link's Awakening DX and added color and uh, made it a little bit better. And then they completely remade it from scratch for Switch in 2019. It's an awesome game. Okay, gotcha. All right, so that was oh. Link's Awakening. One second. Link oh, to, you got something? I was just going to say Link to, Link to the Past is the Super Nintendo one. Yeah, I, was, got, I got those confused, you know. No, no biggie. Like, yeah. All right, good stuff. All right, and then it, you're playing another game here, right, Hodge? Yeah, I uh, after we talked about the Gears of War E Day uh, reveal at the Xbox Showcase, I got really wanting to go back to it, that that universe. So, me and our friend Berto, uh, who is a buddy of ours on Discord from the LSM community, uh, me and him have been co oping the original trilogy, and we beat the first two, and we're on the third one now. And I just forgot how much I love these games. They're so much fun. And mm-hmm. like it is just it is uh, it ha- I think it involved like or uh, it was like involved in the creation of the term bro shooter. It's just like a bunch of bros just going out like kind of like action. And there's so much fun. Like the first game, it's very it's very bare bones plot wise. It's just like there's alien like alien invasion emerging from the ground and go kill the the main evil commander guy. And that's really all it is. And, they allude to Marcus's past and all that, but they don't really do much with it. You know, they kind of very surface level introduce each character. But then the second game, that's when you start learning a lot about these characters. And especially the Dom storyline is still one of them. Like, I actually didn't remember the second game very well when I was playing it. But the one thing I did remember was the entire Dom plot, because that's like the heart of that game. But like after the moment that I'm not going to spoil with Dom, uh, I 
pretty much blanked on the rest of that game. I was like, oh yeah, for all this happens and all that. And so it was, uh, but it was really fun because I got a couple of achieve- achievements while I was playing it. And so I went to look at the achievement list and um, it shows like the achievements I got way back in the day. So it's funny seeing like July of 2024 achievement unlocks. And then it was like June of 2009 or whatever it was. Like, <laughs> that's insane. So it was a it was, whole different world back yeah, then. Yeah. So, like, that, yeah, 2009, if it was then, I was either just graduated from high school or uh, recently in college. So, like, What's that's when I was playing it. Right? Huh? What's a podcast? 2009? Yeah, no exactly. Right. There were what, is. two in existence? Um, I started listening phone. to podcasts later that year. But yeah. not in June 2009. No. <laughs> yeah. I just got a phone call from Eugene, Oregon. Okay. So I'm guessing a nice spam call about my loan or something. But uh, no, anyway, no, uh, yeah. But and then the third one is it's just a step up in any every way. Dude, you should have. You should have put them on the podcast. You should have put them on the speakerphone right on the air, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. what's up, man? Yeah, yeah. I just anyway. get that automated voice of your loan is being under it, or maybe now. it's a maybe it's a political thing. Yeah, like, did you know. know that they're trying to take away your rights? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm blocking every one of those numbers, but um, uh, but yeah, Gears of War three is a step up in every way. That's when the they got the new engine. I think that's when they switched the engines to the next Unreal or something. And but it graphically, it's it even holds up now. And it's weird, though, because it's a game that has FPS boost, but when you download it, you have to go into the game settings and turn on FPS boost. It's not, like, automatically activated. So we, me and Berto started up, and we're like, man, this seems really choppy. And it was we noticed it was playing at 30, and so we looked it up. And, yeah, like, yeah, you have to go to the game settings and turn it on. And then, of course, we go back, and then it's, like, 4K60. And we're like, oh, this looks gorgeous. And so it's playing really smooth. It's a it's a improved all the gameplay, and yeah, I'm just loving this going back to this trilogy, and I'm excited to play four and five since I haven't played those ones yet. So I'm excited to get to those, even though I know I've, I've heard it's basically a little step down, but the story is still good. So I'm excited to get to them. But yeah, I'm enjoying going back and reliving my high school and college days playing Gears of War one through three. <laughs> Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, you usually, if you're playing a, an older game on Xbox, you usually have to go into those settings, the like the compatibility options or whatever, and you can turn on auto HDR and you can turn on FPS boost because it it doesn't do it on its own usually because wow. that's something that that's something that Microsoft did on their own without the developers, um, so they don't enable it on their own because it's not like the developer didn't add it. Although in this um. case they own, they well they don't own the developer. It was by Epic, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so you have to enable it yourself. I always check to see. Hmm. Um, so I wonder how stuff. many games I've played on old settings and just not even noticed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Always, anytime you're playing an old game, go in there and see if there's some good options for you. Hmm. Yeah, because um, that's but, how we played too. So that's probably why it looked a little choppier than because we played the Ultimate Edition, which was an Xbox One game. So that one automatically had it. But uh, for two, we played the obviously two and three are Xbox. So we probably played two on the original settings, but didn't really notice. But we noticed it in three, so we went and checked and changed it. But yeah, that, and that's all. That's all. Nice. Well, and I've been playing Fortnite, but we don't need to talk about that. So. Uh, yeah, that's all I've been playing. Nice. Yeah, Gears of War, I loved... Well, I like Gears of War. I don't love it. Uh, I played, as I said in the past, I played a ton of Gears of War 2, a little bit of Gears of 3, and that's pretty much it. Like, I, I'm not a massive Gears fan, but there was a time when I was on there all the time, playing the multiplayer mainly. Um, although we did, we co-opt the campaign, too. Um, Sean, you have any thoughts about Gears? And then you're up next if you want to get into what you're playing. No, Gears are great games. Uh, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on 4 and 5, given that you've not played them. I, I, I really do like 4 and 5 as well. Um, I don't think it's a major step down in terms of gameplay. Um, I think they're right there. But yeah, I'm excited to hear your thoughts going forward. Um, all right, and I have a plethora of games to discuss here. Um, so I finished SMT 5 Vengeance. I got two different endings. So there's six total endings for the game. um but i got yeah i know um but like easy because uh once you beat it once like all your you carry over like all your um you carry over all your demons your level stays so it's like you can like speed right through it um so i did two of the endings one is the canon of creation ending which is like one of the can there's three canon of create four canon of creation endings and two canon of vengeance endings and the canon of vengeance are the two new ones so i did one of the canon of creation and um endings and then i did one of the canon of uh vengeance ones 
I can say this, the canon of Vengeance ending, much better. It makes the game a lot better. Um, I really enjoyed it. It is, like I said, it's an it's Atlas's Dark Souls. It's very difficult compared to Persona. But it, overall, it's really good. If you want more of my thoughts on it, again, you can listen to last week's episode where I kind of went more in depth about it. Um, but I enjoyed it. Um, also, I just finished Fire Emblem Three Houses. So I was playing at like a really rapid clip. I got like 90% through the game and then I kind of like put it down for a week and then I picked it up and finished it. I actually finished it yesterday. And um, again, awesome game, not a tactics guy, but it was the first really tactics combat game that drew me in. I really liked the relationships between everyone. Um, Yeah, it was a great, great game. Um, Really excited. It's got me interested in more of the Fire Emblem games. So I'm probably going to go back and try Awaken again on my 3DS. Like I played that for like two hours and was like, yeah, I'm good with this. Um, so I am going to go back and play that. Uh, eventually, I probably you... will What? Oh, I'm sorry. Before you move oh. on to the next game, I just want to say something. Uh, I was going to say, um, I in the future, I probably will go back and play three houses again and do a different one of the houses. Because there's obviously there's three houses. I only did one of them. So three different stories? Yeah, basically. I, I heard they're like, they're not like vastly different, but... You can get a different experience, different relationships with characters and stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. yeah I'm just going to say here, Fire Emblem fans, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Sean is a fan now. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a Fire Emblem fan, as I've said numerous times. I loved Awakening. It's what sold me the 3DS. I love tactics RPGs. They're so awesome. And Fire Emblem is one of the best. Um, so good, awesome stories, awesome characters, awesome world, really fun combat. Um, they got the social links and some romance, which I enjoy, as you know. Um, it's just it's just a cool experience. So I'm really glad that you enjoyed that, Sean. Um, go back and play Awakening. Give it another shot. I mean, I'm for the time that it was in, it was awesome. I love that game. The time travel stuff you said you didn't like, I actually enjoyed that. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I mean, um I was going to say, since you like, I know how much you like romance and all that social links and stuff, I think you would adore Three Houses, because so I, apparently, from everyone that's told me that Three Houses takes it to like the next level with the social links. So, mm. definitely when the Switch 2 comes out, if you're going to get that, which you said you will, um, mm-hmm. I would say go back and play Three Houses. As long as Nintendo doesn't pull a Nintendo and be like, it's not backwards compatible, I'll, <laughs> I'll be so bad. Um, in that case, I'll just have to pick up a Switch and play it. But, um... Yeah, no, I've heard that Three Houses is like one of the best Fire Emblem games, like period. Like it's awesome. So um, I forget the one that came after Awakening um, also had kind of like different factions with like slightly different stories. I yeah, they had the, they, was they did like the Pokemon release where they had like two different versions and they came up with a third Fates, version. Fates, right? I think it was Fates. I think it was Fates and then there was the other one was called... Um... I forget what the other one was called, but yeah, it was Fates and something else. Yeah, one was purple and one was like orange or red. Yeah, yeah it was a Pokemon, but, uh, Pokemon effect. Yeah, yeah, but it was like you picked. You were in a different family with a slightly yeah. with a kind of a different story for each one. So that I played both, and they were both good. Um, but all right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack. You want to get into your next game? I know this one you're really excited about. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've been playing Trails through Daybreak. Oh my gosh, this game! It's one of my Legend of Heroes games, and. Midnight, you had brought up earlier to me, like, you know, get, you know, it seems like I can jump in here. And the more I play it, the more I'm like, there's no way you can just jump in. Um, because they make so many subtle references to, like, prior events. And some characters come up that like, I didn't think any past characters were going to be, like, in this game. And probably, like, at two hours into the game, a character that has been in, then previously in other games comes up. And you're like, oh, my gosh. And, like, if you don't have that all that backstory you're gonna be like yeah who cares like whatever like yeah that character died big deal yeah but like there's so many references to like the the previous games that i am absolutely loving this game uh the new characters are awesome so van is the new protagonist and i absolutely love him and i I think he might go he might top lloyd for those who uh know me with my trails lloyd is one of my favorite characters of all time and he's like one of my favorite main characters of all time but van might top him Van is so cool. He's 24 and he runs like a, he runs like a, um, people go to him to get like stuff done. So if they don't want to go to the police, they don't want to use like the break, they're called bracers, which are like, they're like, they're like activists for, um, for just like regular citizens. They'll go to him to get stuff done. He's kind of like a fixer, but he does things on his own way. It's kind of cool. It's a really cool dude. Um, 
but I, I'm really loving him. He loves to eat dessert, which is awesome. Like he's a big dessert guy. So that I, I also enjoy some dessert. Yeah, so that it's so funny when he like he's like such a serious persona and then when he's eating his dessert, you can see like he's so like he's in, so enjoying it and he just like he doesn't smile a lot, but when he's eating his dessert, he smiles, it's awesome. Um some of the characters are great. Like you have Agnes, who's like awesome. She's like a high school student who ends up working part time for her. And she oh, has like, of, she, of course she is. Of oh, course of course. Is. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, and no, but then everyone gives him crap for it. Like, what are you doing? Like, you can't be like hitting. She's, she's a teenager. What is wrong with you? Everyone gives him crap for it. He's like, I, it's not my fault. And then there's like another, uh, you get another um, character that joins your party eventually named fairy. And she's awesome. She's like a little ninja girl. So cool. Um, wicked, like really fast in the combat. That's another thing. The combat in this game is awesome. Cause they have, you have these, your typical like turn base, but then you also have the action combat part. And I thought it was going to take me a while to get used to it, but oh my gosh, I'm loving this, the way that they run the combat. Cause you can simultaneously swap between going action and then to turn base. And it's, it's great. Um, and then it just, the more I play it, the more I've seen that um, Falcon neon Falcom, which is like the developers of the game, they've gotten so much better at the localization process with NIS that this game is probably the best it's ever been localized. Like it's just so good. Like the way that the, the way they're writing is it's, it's a, it's a, it's a next level. Uh, the voice acting is good, but there's a lot less in this game than in the previous 3d version. So like there's less voice acting than in like cold. Se- You'll get points where like there's one character voice acting, like talking and then the other characters will respond, but it's just like text dialogue. It's really, it's kind of off putting. It's kind of weird. Um, but like, it doesn't bother me because I, like I said, I'm, I'm. If I, if I could choose, I would choose no dialogue. I would choose all text. Um, but uh, the setting's awesome. Uh, the, it takes place in the Republic of Calvard, and it's so different than Erebonia, which is like where everything else was taking place. Basically, Erebonia and Crossbell. It is so different. It's so much more like tech based. Like they have, they have like movies, like actual movies. You, like that's one of your social links you can do is like you can go to the movies with someone and like watch a movie. It's kind of cool um there's a lot more vehicles in it like it's like i said it's a lot more tech based which is kind of cool and the diversity and location is awesome like you'll be in like a town that reminds me of like new york city and then you'll go on like um you'll go to another area and it's like china it's very diverse it's 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 really cool and i'm loving it and one more thing before i move on um the amount of care they have with the npcs is awesome like there are there's so many npcs in every area and they're all specifically named and if you talk to them like they all have unique dialogue it's not just like rinse and repeat and it's not just like hey i really enjoy you know coming to this restaurant like they'll tell you things about the world and you learn more about like the characters like by talking to all of the um npcs you learn how much van is actually connected to the community and you learn about how um like you just learn so much about the characters and it's awesome. It just shows how much they really care in their writing. Like I talk to every NPC. That's how I play the game. Like anytime I go to a new place, I'm like talking to someone new and it's great. Um, mm-hmm. The social links are awesome too. Like you have, like, you can go on like, um, like you have events you can go to, like they're, they're called connections and like you have to choose which one you like. Do you want to connect with this character? Do you want to connect with that character? And like, you can miss out on some and you can get gifts for people um but it's awesome and I'm, I'm really enjoying it i'm in halfway through chapter three so i did the prologue which is pretty long chapter one chapter two they're all pretty long chapters it's funny though this is the only game they do chapters every other game just acts so it's kind of new too i have no idea how many chapters are i'm not looking anything up so uh, i'm i'm really digging it the side quests are great too but yeah all right man we can tell that you really love it <laughs> um yeah i just want to say you're not making this easy uh you're not you're not doing yourself a, a service here, Sean. If you're trying to get me to play these games by saying that I can't just jump in, Dude, you want I'm, me to go I'm back and you, play like, a thousand hours of oldness? I'm telling you, like the more I play it, the more I'm like, there's no way someone can just jump in because you're gonna be like, wait, they're making reference to this. Like, you can play it, but you're gonna be like, you're not gonna have the full context. Like but, chapter two, if you don't play, if you have not played the Crossbell Arc games, chapter two is not gonna hit the way it hits. Okay, but how about this, Sean? There's there's something to be said, though, about the prequel effect. Like, let's say you're playing a game, right? And I'm just going to make this up. Let's say this character, Bob, comes on the screen, right? 
you don't know Bob. Bob's from the previous game. You don't know him because you didn't play the previous game, right? So Bob's a new character to you. You play the game. You're like, all right, Bob's cool. You beat the game. Then you go back and play the old game as a prequel. Yeah, and nothing. you're like, oh, shit, that's Bob. I remember Bob from the other no, game. Because for now this, I get to see like, his backstory. No, for this, it's like, oh, my God, there's Bob. I can't believe it. How? Like, I didn't think he'd be here. How did he get to the Republic of Calvert? What's he doing here? And I just got to a point in the game uh, in Chapter 3 where a character comes up from that's like a main main character from the um cold steel games and i i she looks so much more grown up because this game takes place a couple years later and i'm like whoa it's awesome like i'm so oh my god i, I i'm constantly thinking about it like my wife is getting mad because i keep talking about it she's like shut up and i'm like all right into it shout out to Fair aaron enough. shout out to aaron he's a cool guy he's a cool party member he's awesome Fair enough, fair enough. And I just want to say shout out to Bob, the most famous JRPG character in the world. All right. Um, Hodge, I just want to say that while he was going on about this, you could not have looked any less interested, bro. I was looking at the camera there and you look like you were dying on the inside. And as someone who loves to slander weebs, I have to say, I really appreciated that. <laughs> I really appreciated that. I, I did a uh, zone out there for a second. I, I, not, I, I mean, <laughs> thankfully, if you're just listening to it, if Sean was talking and it's not like there was a break in the show, but in the video, yeah, you'll be like, yeah, that guy's really tired. From this last week. <laughs> joke, yeah, you look really you tired and really like you could give a fuck less <laughs> about those like, jokes. Games. Jokes on you guys. Hodge has played all the Trails games. Are you kidding me? Uh -huh. I'm actually, I actually worked on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He designed he did, he the character the local, Bob. Yeah, yeah he mm -hmm. did the localization that I love. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Good stuff, Sean. Good stuff. Do you have another game? I do have one like... more game. I, I have been playing it like anytime, like if I don't have like a long period of time, like I have like 30 minutes to kill, I've been playing Taste, ta Taste. Toy Story 2, like the PS1 classic. Uh, I got trophy <laughs> updates for PS Plus, and I used to rent this game so much. I never owned it, but I used to rent it on N64 all the time. Like, even in, like, 2004, I'd be renting it. It's just, like, a giant, like, platformer, like, sand, like, you're collecting tokens. Like, you're doing, like, n tasks for all the different, like, toys. Gosh, I didn't realize how bad the controls are in this game. Oh, my gosh, they're so bad. But I have, like, so much nostalgia for it. So I've just been, like, playing. Anytime I have, like, 30 minutes, and, like, I'm, like, all right, I'm just going to play this. It's like shoot, you run around as Buzz Light. You're like I run around Andy's house, or like, uh, um, like you can go to um this like construction. Like, it's based off of the second movie, but you're going there's areas like that are like you're like in the neighborhood. Like it's the part you know you guys seen Toy Story two, right? Oh yeah. You know the part where like they run out and they have like they have like the the um the cones on their head and they're trying to cross mm -hmm. the street. Yeah, it's really like funny there's like, a little. Yeah, like there's like a level they just call it like, the neighborhood, and like that's supposed to, and like before you go into that like um that area, like they show that scene, so it's supposed to be like that part of the movie, but it's like you're not crossing, like there's cones and stuff. It's weird. I don't know. You're just doing various tasks. It's fun. You're running around as Buzz Light. You're shooting things. I think I did play this. It's fun. There's like weird bosses. Like there's a boss in each stage. Like one of them's like a kite. Like you're just like a giant kite's flying around. You have to shoot the kite. One of them is a like a robot in Andy's attic. Um, it's, it's really bizarre. It's fun though, but I used to rent it so much. So I just, I said, screw it. It just, it looks familiar. So I feel like I did play this. I was, I was obsessed with Toy Story 1 and 2 as a kid. I watched those movies over and over and Good over. Movies. Yeah. So I feel like I, I would have played this as like, mom, dad, it's Toy Story. This might ring a bell. Do you remember mixing paint? Mm -mm. No, what, what's it reminding me of it is seeing the floating tokens. I just remember being Buzz yeah, Lightyear okay. and jumping for tokens. Like, I just remember yeah, that. Because <laughs> one, of, one of the Pizza Planet tokens you have to get is, like, collecting these 50 gold coins and giving them to Ham. Yeah. It's like, Mr. Mr. Potato Head's always missing a piece in each level. So it's like, oh, find his ear, find his hat. <laughs> and it's like, or, like, Miss Bo Peep, find my sheep. It's, it's just a, it's a really, like, child-friendly collectathon. But like the controls are horrendous. Luckily, you can remap them, which I did. Oh, nice! nice. And that's, right. that's it. Right on, right on. Yeah, I never played the Toy Story games. I think I was too old for that. But um, I did, of course, watch the Toy Story movies, and those are classic movies. Great movies, great stories at the time. Definitely awesome, like you know, three D art, CG, whatever you want to call it. 
good stuff, the Pixar. So nice. Nice. So we got a ton of Weebery and one child's classic. Good stuff, Sean. All right. Let me go ahead and get into what I'm playing. And this is going to be probably a little bit shorter because these are games that I've already talked about. I'm just I'm playing three games, really. Two mainly I want to talk about. The two games I'm playing, I'm playing Diablo 4. Now, Diablo 4, I'm absolutely addicted to this game. I'm fully addicted to this game. This is my relax and chill out game. This is my turn off my brain. This is my I'm stressed out because my work, I got freaking 13 claims today that I have to handle all at once and customers are fucking pissed. And I'm dealing with contractors who are trying to add a bunch of bullshit to their work order that they don't actually need and they're lying about code. So I'm sick of that. I get off work. I get to completely turn off my brain and I get to turn on a podcast and I get to just play Diablo and just run through dungeons and just blow shit up and get loot and power up my character. Um, and it's just it's just a very like cathartic, fun, relaxing experience. So that's my relaxing game. Um, I, I'm not playing with any other people. Um, I don't really want to play with anyone um, because, like I said, I, this is my I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to think. I just listen to a podcast and turn off your brain. You know, those comfort games kind of. That's what this Diablo is for me. I don't have to do anything because the dungeons are not hard. You just run through and just whack stuff if you're built correctly. Um, so that's good stuff. So that's Diablo 4. I'm still playing my Necromancer um, I am now level 85 or 86, working my way up to the max level of 100. Um, and once I hit 100, I'll be able to do even higher content like the pit and uh, all this stuff. So it's good stuff, and I'm enjoying that. Um, so that's my chill out game. The next game is my sweaty game. Um, I am playing X Defiant uh, <laughs> along with my, my boy DLB. Uh, and occasionally, if, if he ever gets on, my other friend uh, Killshot or Nick. Um, my old Call of Duty friends, my old YouTube friends. So we get on there. We're all sweaty. We're all good at the game, especially those two. Um, and yeah, we just get on there and we just go hard um, and just try to destroy everyone. I got my awesome, my awesome Dual Sense Edge controller here with the back paddles and the little dome sticks. Look at that! The stick is domed. I like that. This controller has really made playing shooters on the PlayStation much better. I highly recommend the DualSense Edge. If you're playing a shooter on PlayStation, I feel like the base controller sucks for shooters. Because one, I don't really... Per, this is a personal take, obviously. This is this is just Midnight's opinion. I don't like the sticks that are like both down here like this. I prefer the offset like Xbox sticks. Um, and on the default controller... Um, it's kind of like a flat stick with just a little ridge, right? And it just didn't feel that comfortable for shooters when I'm down here. But this was a game changer, having these rubberized dome sticks down here. It feels great. I'm enjoying it. So random shout out to the DualSense Edge. But um, X Defiant has been a lot of fun. I've been grinding. It's free to play if you guys don't know. Um, I've been doing, uh, we've been popping off. Um, I had a ga couple games yesterday where I was dropping 46, 41 kills, um, which is pretty, which is pretty good, pretty high. I feel like, um, and we've been winning most of our games. Um, they just added new camos and a new operator. So they added GSK faction, which is from, um, the Tom Clancy rainbow six siege game. So they got like the barbed wire that you can put down on the ground and they have like a trophy system that destroys incoming grenades um, and they have a helmet. What's cool about this helmet is that it's functional. So when people shoot you in the head, you actually don't take increased damage at all uh, on that faction. So that's kind of cool. Like you don't get melted as much from headshots. Um, so it's fun. And like I'm working on the camo grind. They added like the prismatic camos that are like rainbow and like move and stuff like it looks really cool. Um, so I'm just grinding out weapon levels and it's been a lot of fun. So those are the two games that I'm playing Diablo four and X defiant. Um, do either of you guys have any comments on either of those games? Probably we already got into these before, but I want to give you the chance. Uh, I have a question. Why are you playing on PlayStation? You're not a real game. You should be playing on PC keyboard and mouse. Come on. Yeah, I, I like I like using controller for most shooters, um, but I'm playing. That's where my friends are. That's where DLB plays. He's on PS5, so that's where do they I'm not playing. have crossplay for this. Uh, they <laughs> do, they do, but it's just it's just more convenient being on the same system because we could just hop in a PlayStation party um, and stuff. Whereas if you're doing crossplay, you kind of have to like get on Discord or something like that to have voice chat. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I just thought it'd be easier for me. To, I have a PS5. Why not use it? You know, it's fine, especially with this controller. I honestly like it a lot. Um, so, yeah. So you guys don't have anything to say about these two? I know we've already gone into it. No, I uh, I gave up on X Defiant. Like we talked about it. It just got so sweaty. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. There is a third game that I am playing, um, which I did not put on the show notes because I've barely played it at all. And that is Yakuza 3. Um, I'm still I was kind of working on that. But honestly, I got so addicted to Diablo 4 and X Defiant that I haven't like touched it at all. <laughs> like, I don't know if I've, I've played it maybe once or twice since the last time we recorded. But shout out to y- Yakuza 3. One day I will stop my addiction and actually get back and play you. Um But anyways, we're going to go ahead and segue into our main topic of discussion. Um, Before we do that, though, um, I do want to briefly talk about the cover of this video, because I feel like we're going to put College Football 25 on the thumbnail, and that is like the big draw in here to this topic. If we don't talk about College Football 25 a little bit, I feel like that's a little bit awkward. You know, I feel like people getting clickbaited. We don't want to do that. So I want to briefly talk about College Football 25 because I'm so excited about it. Um, are you guys going to play this game at all? Yeah, I'm getting it day one. You're getting it day one? What about you, yeah. Hodge? Are you as I are said, you a football guy? For, yeah, I talked about it. I love it. I'm just waiting for reviews. I don't I don't trust EA. You don't trust EA? Um, well, you, are you Game Pass Ultimate? Yeah. Okay, so you should have a 10-hour uh, free trial that you'll be able to do. So you'll. Be, I think it starts on the 16th. You'll be able to play 10 hours, and then if you like it, you can just uh, scoop it up. Mm. So that'll be that'll be awesome. Um, But yeah, I cannot wait for college football 25. It's so great. There's there's three main modes and I'm excited about all three of them. Of course, you have dynasty mode. Um, I'm going to start out with my Ohio State Buckeyes. I know this is kind of lame because they're already a juggernaut powerhouse. Usually with dynasty, you want to start with like a scrub school and build them up. Right. But I have to. Yeah, I have to play as my Buckeyes first, though, that because I'm a diehard Buckeye fan. I mean, look right there, Ohio. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to win a national championship or two with the Buckeyes, and then I'm going to start a rebuild with a scrub struggling school. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's also the road to glory where you get to create your own player and you play as one position. So you could be like a middle linebacker, a cornerback, a quarterback, a halfback, et cetera. Um, and you just play that position, those games and you level up and, and get good and win awards and make it to the NFL. So that sounds really fun. And I'm looking forward to that. And then last but not least, they have the cash grab, the the slot machine simulator. They have a uh, ultimate team, which they're added uh, in here. Um, so I'm going to play that too a little bit, but it is the one I'm least excited about. I enjoy ultimate team, but it is kind of scummy, <laughs> you know, um, but it's, it's fun assembling and building your team. So I cannot wait on the 16th college football. 25 is coming out. Um, any, any final thoughts for college football before we jump into our main topic, guys, anything you want to say? I'm just I'm, I'm excited it's coming back. I'm excited that everyone is like really pumped for it. Uh, everything looks good from what they've shown. I'm excited to see how well it sells because a lot of people think it might be the best selling game this year. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's gonna be. Uh, I'd be shocked if it passed. Um, I don't know. If, I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna eclipse FIFA. It could, but um, or even Call of Duty, but. We'll see how Call of Duty with the whole Game Pass thing does. We don't know how that's going to affect it, but it's going to be interesting. Well, I mean, Madden has sucked for a decade, and that's still always a top-selling game. So bringing back one that people liked more might generate a lot more hype and have a lot of people who might have fallen off come back to it. I could see it being the top-selling, but I could also see it just being top five. So it, It's funny. People liked it more, but Madden still sold more. Which is weird. Yeah, I think I feel like the the whole return thing is what'll bring people. Like I mean, there yeah, might be a dip for twenty six, but twenty five I feel like it's gonna be huge. Wouldn't it be great if they just took like three years off each after between each game? That'd well what they should have done is made it just a subscription game that each year it's updated with ro- the a roster updates, the rankings update, just Make it a live service game where you the it, even you can have it stay keep up like do a mode where you play all of the games of that week and like have an actual live season 
in the game. Like that's what they should do instead of just making it a game you buy for 60 bucks each year or 70 bucks each year that they kind of change some shit. Just make it an ongoing thing that you, it's a $5 a month subscription or something and you, it updates as seasons go on. Like, I think that's what they should do, but I don't know. I'm not a game developer. So what the fuck do I know? (laughs) Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm excited. Um, and Hodge, you're smart to not pre-order, but I'm telling you now, this game is going to be awesome. There's no chance that this game is bad. Zero chance. Um, they've shown so much of this game. They've put 80-page blogs showing it. Um, people have played extensively this game. Like uh, Content creators in the space already have and are playing this game and are posting videos of their gameplay. Like some dude posted like his whole dynasty run. People are doing all the modes um, and all these people who have played the game for tens and twenties of hours. They're all like, this is amazing. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, so I, the chance of this being bad is almost none, but we got a 10 hour trial. So we don't have to, buy, we don't have to prepay anyway. Game pass, baby. All right, guys. So that's enough about that. Shout out College Football 25. I didn't want to clickbait you guys and have that be like the big draw in with the thumbnail and then us not even talk about it. You know what I mean? And I am so genuinely so excited about it. But let's go ahead. What? (laughs) We're going to talk about football. So we obviously would have talked about it when we're talking about football. (laughs) We're going to talk about the old games. Yeah. I was going to bring it up. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let's go ahead and get into our main topic of discussion for this episode, boys. So we are going to be talking about our favorite sports games of all time, and we're going to go by sport by sport. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a curveball out there because we're about to get into baseball as our first topic. I'm going to throw a curveball. I haven't told Sean this. Um, I haven't mentioned this at all. I just had this thought. But, Sean, since I think this was your idea for this topic, I could be wrong. I think it was. I'm going to go ahead and pass the ball to you and let you be the MC. You're going to guide this discussion. You're going to be the, the 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 host of this segment, if you will, if that's cool with you. Why that's don't you take it me. away? Go ahead and lead all us right. down this path of sports. All right. Well, as you know, we're going to start with America's pastime, baseball, one of the oldest games in American history. So let's start with baseball. All right. And I'm just going to throw a game out there that you guys are probably all thinking I'm going to name that I've talked about in the past, but I'm not going to name that one yet because I've talked about it already. I'm going to talk about MVP baseball from EA sports. It's in the game. Um, MVP baseball, 2005, specifically the 2005 version, but Oh four was really good. And Oh three was really good too. Um, But Oh five, what a classic game. This is considered by some to be like a, one of the all-time great games of all time. Um, had Manny Ramirez on the cover of the Boston Red Sox. They just won the World Series, broke the curse of the Bambino. This game was way ahead of its time. It had an owner mode. It had a dynasty mode. You could create your own stadium uh, in owner mode. You had brought in like ticket revenue. You had fan happiness. You had player happiness. Now, remember, this is 2005, folks. Um You had so much control over the rosters. It it was ahead of its time. And the gameplay was so much fun. It wasn't as simulation as like MLB The Show. It was kind of a mix between simulation and arcade. Uh, I have so many good memories of this game. Just like staying up so late playing this game with my friends. Um, Going into like doing a dynasty mode and doing a fantasy draft You with like the minor leagues too. So you had a triple A, a double A, and a single A team. So you had like, I think it was like, a hundred and something rounds to draft a fantasy. And by the time you're doing like a single, you're like, who is this player? It's made up. Like, I don't even know who this is. Um, and you could play like all the minor league teams had their own stadiums too, which was awesome, which is something that MLB the show still doesn't have. Um, it was just such a cool game. I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I just loved playing like the franchise mode and simming. Like I would sim games. I'd play, I'd play like a game of series and the games would fly by. And I remember, Oh my God, I hit like, I, I did a fantasy draft with a Mets, and I drafted this player, Corey Patterson, who absolutely was terrible in real life. Um, and I remember I hit, like, 55 home runs with him, and, like, and it was, like, the all-star break. And then I looked at, like, his real-life stats, and he had, like, he had been playing for, like, 10 years, and he had only had, like, 45 home runs in his entire 10-year career. And it was so funny. Um, but, yeah, MVP baseball. You guys have any history with MVP? I don't think I oh played that one. Gosh. Oh my gosh! The so- oh, one more thing. The soundtrack was outstanding in this game. So much so that this past week, I've been listening to the soundtrack on Spotify, and I forgot some of the songs are like 
like just got me so much in the mood and then i didn't realize that i only heard like the censored versions so then i'm getting like the the explicit ones and i'm like whoa that wasn't in the song when i was nine years old eight That's years funny. old yeah it was great and then um so unfortunately um mvp went away the M- mvp like like the mlb mvp games went away after the 05 game they did release two more mvp 06 ncaa baseball and 07 ncaa 07 ncaa outstanding like absolutely outstanding i did i didn't like college ba- i didn't really know anything about college baseball and then i played the mvp 07 ncaa game and i was hooked and that got me into college baseball and it was great because they had the aluminum bats so it'd be like clink instead which is very different for baseball games oh god it was awesome i loved it absolutely adored them oh they had mini games too you could play like, these mini games like target practice would be like moving targets in like the outfield and like you're in like an old time park and like I don't know, there's a lot of mini games. They had a ton of classic players too. Uh, shout out to the real ones. No, you create a player named John Dow, John Dow or John Doe, however you want to pronounce it. It, it wasn't spelled like John Doe, but it was people said John Doe. And you unlock everything in the game. All classic players, all classic stadiums, everything. It was great. Wow, I love that game. Okay, I liked at the covers, and I remember them existing, but I never played them. Wow, yeah. we got the noise. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> great game can't believe you never played it i cannot believe it no i played different baseball games though all right i kind of went way too long on that sorry that's fine um hodge right. what do you think what do you got baseball what's your big baseball S- game matter up so i'm not a i'm not a huge baseball fan i i used to be a fairly passive cubs fan i would watch them on tv before the world series this isn't a bandwagon thing um, I actually went to a game the year they went won the World Series. But anyway, um, the only games I really have any history with, I, I briefly played the show when it came to Game Pass for the first time, just because I was like, "Oh shit, it's coming to Xbox! I got to give it a give it a play." And it was fun, but it was a thing I played for four hours for one day, and it was just like, eh, I'm, "I'm done." But the the games I have like the most experience with was back when I was a kid. Obviously, we had backyard baseball. Uh, yes and then uh i also played ken griffey Jr. slugfest on n64 at my friend's house i remember he lived down the street i remember always going over there play ken griffey jr and then the only other one that i've played recently is like wii sports baseball like playing the wii sports baseball is so much fun doing the actual motion and all that kind of stuff but they don't have arms how do they hold the bat <laughs> But yeah, so I, I I don't have too much experience with baseball, but that's that's really kind of the I, I just remember the obsession with backyard baseball when we were kids. That game was everyone was obsessed with that game. It was so Dude. much fun. Dude, but you have yeah. no idea how many hours I put into backyard baseball. Two thousand five <laughs> on my on my PC had a rod in the cover. Oh my gosh, I had like I played season on season. I was the Lemonheads was my team name. <laughs> Pablo Sanchez, Pete Wheeler. I had Pedro Martinez. I had Eric Gagne. Oh my gosh, my team was stacked. I was hitting home runs at <laughs> Albert Pujols, Nomar. Gosh, and then um, oh, what was the kid in the wheelchair? That kid in the wheelchair could hit too. Timmy, you don't talk about the wheel. Yeah, Timmy. the wheelchair kid. Yeah, nah, oh I gosh. can't remember. Backyard baseball, but yeah, great yeah. game. It was, and then you had like that um, play-by-play guy. It was um, Doug. It's like Doug double play, and then it was like Sunny Fields or something, and she would be like, "It was." Kenny got Kenny Gachinui with the play, or it was Pablo Sanchez with the hit. So generic. <laughs> I loved it. Love it. Yeah. Dude, shout out to the Brewers. I see you're wearing a Brewers shirt. I remember I used yeah. to enjoy like I don't know, like 2008 era ish when they had Prince they had Fielder. Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder. That team steroids. was fun to watch, dude. Ryan Braun, yeah. steroids. Yeah. He was a beast though. Yeah. yeah. Steroids. Yeah. I mean, it's baseball, so he ruined a lot, no, a he, lot of on, people. Here's the thing about Ryan Braun, though. He didn't just cheat. He ruined someone's life, too. What did he, I didn't hear about that. Uh, maybe, he, maybe we don't need to get into it. I don't know. No, I'm gonna, we got to get into this now. Ryan Braun is a jerk. What he did to this person. He said that the the um, handler of the test, um, who like handled his like PED test, he got off his suspension because the um, label of his um, like PED thing was like ripped off. Like it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't transported, right? The chain of evidence wasn't correct. And he came out and said that this guy was anti-Semitic, that he went after him and he contaminated his supplement saying that, um, like he did that. And then he tested positive like two months later again for PEDs. 
And then he had to come out and apologize to the guy saying he made that whole thing up. But the guy lost his job, ruined his life. Anytime you Google the guy's name, that's what comes up first. He's a scumbag. Jeez. I'm sorry. I, yeah. He's, that is he's screwed up. But... Yeah. I can't stand him. Jeez. Yeah. Well, hey, fair. I didn't know about that. But I don't now care. that you mention it, I do vaguely remember that kind of. I don't care I, if the players yeah. take PEDs. Like, I, that didn't bother me. Like, steroids, I don't really care. It's your body, whatever you want to do. Um, but that part, like, that really irks me. Yeah. yeah. That's... There were. Yeah, there were a couple of baseball games that you didn't get into that I was a huge fan of. Um, well, one, mainly. Uh, MLB 2K series. I really oh. loved MLB. Oh, dude, MLB 2K9, like 2K10, whatever they had. They cool. had the best. No, they weren't. They had the best pitching system in the game, dude. Uh, the show ripped it off moder- uh, recently, but they, did, they didn't do it as well. Um, like the analog pitching system where like when you create your own player and you're doing like the... Uh, the road story the mode show. or whatever. Yeah, road to the show. Road to the show, basically. Um, like I always would do a pitcher, and they had just the most fun pitching where you would use the analog stick and you would do like a certain motion for the pitch. Um, and it was just so fun. Um, they had it down perfect. Like the motions were awesome and made sense for how the pitch moves or like how it works. Um, and it wasn't just doing the motion, but there was also like a bubble that expanded and you had to time it right to where the bubble was. And it just felt so fun and so intuitive, and it almost felt like you were actually throwing pitches because the way they did the motion like i said it just kind of made sense for that type of pitch um and it was just so much fun pitching in that game and uh the hitting in that game i really loved that game so much they always had the million dollar challenge too like if you threw throw, a perfect, throw, perfect game, game yeah you would get a million dollars um i never did unfortunately but uh what's funny is in mlb the show 14 how'd you good bro <laughs> in uh in mlb Wait. the Earthquake in MLB the show 14. I did throw a perfect game without even trying. I have a gold trophy for it. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, Hodge. If you're watching the video version, you can see whatever is going on over there. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And then I just want to give a couple quick shout outs. Uh, obviously, Mario Baseball. I've talked about that too many times already so i'm not going to talk about it anymore mario baseball mario super sluggers and i want to show out shout out to the the bigs anyone remember the bigs this is like that arcade baseball game i rented that and over the course of a week i just dominated it and just like completely beat the game it was it was a really it was kind of like an evolution of slugfest but like you couldn't fight um yeah but yeah the bigs if you can't fight it's not as good so oh uh, i mean I, i i never played slugfest so um all right all right, that's baseball, and now we're going to move on to probably the most popular sport in America. Not probably, it is. Um, that is football. The best American sport football. in the world. Uh, yeah, American football, folks. American, sorry for... Stand what? down, Euro nerds. This Our is the real football. football. We don't console um, war, but we do international war. So <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with everyone, don't worry. <laughs> um, all right. So for football, obviously, I think we've all played Madden. We've all played NCAA football at some point. Um, I do want to ask each of you, though, about Madden. What is the last Madden game that you bought? Yeah, so for me, I actually, I went in, there was a period where I was really into and really hooked on Madden and it was Madden 15 and Madden 16 and mostly 15. I played Madden 15 for like the whole year and I was playing the ultimate team mainly is what hooked me. I was in there. I was ripping packs. I was grinding the game. I was playing people online. It was a lot of fun. I had a really overpowered team. I got some videos still on my YouTube channel of me pulling like, uh, 99 or kind of almost 100 overall boss Bo Jackson, uh, which was like a super rare card. Um, Like those ultimate cards would come out at the end of the year. And there was two versions. They had the normal like 99 overall version, which like had like a darker looking card. But then they had the boss version, which was kind of like 100 overall. It still said 99 on the card, but it was juiced even further. Um, And like the clouds were like it was brighter white and stuff. That's how you could tell them apart. Um, And it was just... Oh my God, that game was so much fun. So Madden 15 and 16, I played a lot, but then I kind of got burnt out. I'm like, I'm doing the same thing over and over. They're grimy. They want all this money. I don't want to spend all this money. So I fell off and I haven't really touched Madden since then, like at all, hardly. 
Hodge, what about you? Uh, Madden 13. And that was my first one I had bought since like 06 or something like that. And then, yeah, 13 was the last one. And the only reason I got it was because, so that was back in the 360 PS3 area when games were $60. And I was really, really drunk in college. And uh, I saw an ad for, uh, if you bought a year subscription of Sports Illustrated for $50, they'd give you a free copy of Madden. And I was like, well, that's $10 off the game. And I get a year of magazines. So I was like, okay. So I bought it. And then I woke up the next morning forgetting that I bought it. And so when it came, I was just like, oh, yeah, I did this, didn't I? So, yeah, that's the last one I played. <laughs> I just I just didn't care about it anymore. I, I couldn't. I just remember that. I just I, I remember because Megatron was on the cover. So that's the only reason I really, really remember it. But, uh, yeah, I just I didn't care about Madden anymore. So I stopped playing it and. I like I I said before I always liked NCAA better. So when NCAA went away, I also really just lost interest in football games. That's so weird that EA would put a Decepticon on the cover of. I know, right? <laughs> For those who don't know, that's uh, what's his name, Chad Johnson, Calvin Johnson, Calvin, Calvin, Johnson. Calvin Johnson. Chad Johnson was uh, Ocho Cinco. That's right. Ocho Cinco, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Who, uh, yeah. Um, for me, the last Madden game I bought was Madden 25. I got it at the launch. Not not like the new Madden 25, but like the old Madden 25. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be Madden 14, but they didn't name it that. I got it at the launch of the PS4. Barry Sanders was on the cover. Um, or Adrian, was Barry Sanders on the old? I don't know. They had two different covers. They had an Adrian Peterson one and a Barry Sanders one. I don't know. Someone was on the previous gen one. One was on the next gen one. I don't remember. But I, I had uh, the, previous gen um, was previous gen was uh, Barry Sanders. Next gen was Adrian Peterson. All right, so I got Adrian Peterson on the cover. Um, oh, wait, this is all maybe right. I don't remember. It really doesn't matter. Uh, that was yeah. the last Madden game I bought, and I used to be a ferocious Madden player. Like I would play Madden. Like I'll, like I said to Midnight in our one on one, I would just play JRPGs and sports games and platformers. That was it. And I used to play so much Madden, specifically. I remember Madden 2008 with Vince Young on the cover. Oh my gosh, that game got so much playtime out of me. Like you had this thing called the Madden Ring, and it would keep track of like how many games you played and like like the players you use and all your stats. And I maxed it out; like it wouldn't go up anymore. Like once it hit like 990, uh, the digit was like 999 on the wins or 999 on the losses. Like it would stop going up, and like I I hit 999 on the wins and just stopped. Me and my friends would play that game so much. That was the first game with like Tom Brady and Randy Moss on the same team. So it was like, oh, I, I want to be the Patriots. I want to be the Patriots. Because it was just like insane. And uh, oh my gosh. And it had Adri- a rookie Adrian Peterson. And by the end of the year, he was like a 99 overall just from the updates. And it was like, gosh, I played that game so much. And Vince Young was good in the game because he was on the cover. I remember yeah. in Madden, must have been 08. It would have been the it would have been the year after the Bears went to the Super Bowl. They gave Devin Hester the the first player to Madden ever have a hundred, hundred overall uh, speed. Oh yeah, no, no, that was Madden 08. Yeah, Madden 08. They had Devin because there was a the Madden 08 had these things called the throwback challenges, and it was mm-hmm. like um you had to play like historic events, and one of them was like return the opening kickoff for the Super Bowl with Devin Hester, and it was he like a ri- ridiculous challenge. Yeah, sorry, he had a hundred speed. Yeah. He was the yeah. first and only yeah, player crazy. to ever be given 100 speed instead of 99. And then you know, Johnson got it too later on. You know, weirdly and interestingly enough, I was watching a uh, College Football 25 Dynasty video last night. Because again, like I said, some of these content creators have the game and they're playing it. Um, he was playing Dynasty mode on the new game um, and he scouted some uh some athlete player like a five star and the dude had a hundred speed and i was like what the fuck so i don't know if that's like a glitch or if, if they intended for people to have a hundred speed but there is a player in college football 25 with a hundred speed and he was he didn't get him he wanted him that would be like game breaking i feel like it's a lot of speed right. uh speaking of uh college football let's we'll talk a little bit about well, i know we talked about the new one but uh what is your favorite old ncaa football game now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a little history with NCAA football. I've only ever played one of them, and that was and the first one I ever bought was the last one that came out. I bought it the day it came out. I remember my friend Greg came over, and we played it, and he convinced me to get it, and I, like, loved it. In Northeast, we weren't big into college football. That's when I started getting into, like, college football. It was, like, 2014, 2013-ish. Um, but I remember playing that and, like, falling and being like, this is so much better than Madden. Like so much better than Madden the way it plays. Um, I did a dynasty with Rice 
you know, remember like Rice University. Yeah, University yeah. Oh, Rice University led them to the national championship. Yeah, that was that was a good time. I played so many years of that game. But yeah, and uh, my brother in law at the time was not my brother in law because he was wasn't married to my sister yet. But him and his roommate were in college were so into it, and his roommate was really good. And I remember like visit going to shout out to Springfield College, going to Springfield Mass, which is like three hours away from me, just to play his uh, friend and um. NCAA football because I had it on PlayStation, he had it on Xbox, and like I was like, wow, he really is really good. Uh, my last NCAA oh, or my my favorite NCAA was 07. I remember it because it's the one that had Reggie Bush on the cover, and I don't remember what it was about that game, but I, that was the one that I had and was obsessed with the most. And yeah, I'll always remember the Reggie Bush cover. But yeah, that's that's the one I always remember. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I can't even. I don't. No, I can't tell you which one was my favorite because I don't really remember. Like, I'm not able to distinguish between like, oh, that was 07. You know what I mean? To me, like NCAA was just like, it was my child. It was like my childhood um, and my young adulthood, my life. Like I played every single NCAA football religiously from like 1998 or something when I was in high school because I'm old um, up until I think about like 2008, 2009 was when I finally kind of stopped because that was when I started to get super addicted to shooters and I started jumping in Call of Duty and stuff. And that kind of took my life. And I do remember I made a conscious decision that I was not going to buy NCAA 14 uh, because it had that Florida. Michigan scrub on the title. And I hate oh, that, Michigan was, can fuck off was, and uh, die. Um, who was that? That was um, not literally die. What was his name? Uh he was a, they wanted to move. He was like an athlete. They had no position for him in the NFL. He tried at quarterback, tried at running back. I can't remember his name. Wasn't he? He was, Denard he was their quarterback. It was Denard Robinson, I think. It wasn't Denard Robinson? I think so. He sucks. He, Michigan he sucks. The he ended up going They're to the cheaters. Guys. And if you're a Michigan fan out there, I just want you to know get ready to start losing multiple games a year because it's going to happen. <laughs> Shout out to the Buckeyes. All right. Denard Robinson. It was Denard Robinson, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, oh, and one more shout out before we move on from football, uh, backyard football. We kind of talked about it with backyard baseball, but again, I played so much backyard football as a kid. Led my, I was also the Lemonheads in that game. That was like my go to mascot when I played backyard <laughs> sports. Uh, led them to the Super Bowl. Well, the backyard bowl or the cereal bowl is what they called it the cereal bowl. You had the backyard conference and the front yard conference, the BFC and the AFC. <laughs> I mean, the, and the FF front yard, FCC, which is weird. FCC. Um, but yeah. It was what great. about two things, Sean? Um, first of all, real quick, I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty sure you can create your own team in college football. So uh, yeah, I knew that. You, so can do that you can that bring back the Lemonheads. Yeah, you can do that in 14 too. I remember. Yeah, you could make the Lemonheads and win a national title. I would always. But, um, I would always make SCLSU the college from Waterboy, and I'd make Bob Boucher my middle <laughs> linebacker. And I know a lot of people. Awesome. A lot of my friends made the university from Accepted. South Harmon Institute of Technology. <laughs> the mascot was just poop. <laughs> the I was going to say. S-H-I-T. S-H-I-T. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I was going to say, what about NFL Blitz? Did you guys ever play that? That was the arcade Never game. Play. Never played. Oh, that was kind of like the NBA jam of football. Like you would just lay people out, dude. You'd be like body slamming them, just vicious hits. And it was like fast paced. That was fun. I I was never good at it, so I didn't ever appreciate it. <laughs> I always got my ass kicked in that one. I don't know why. I, it's because I never owned it. So every time I played it, I'd play it at someone's house who owned it, and they would always whoop my ass. <laughs> yeah. The only other football game I played was Tech Mobile on NES. Oh yeah, um, classic. But we had the one that was like it wasn't the original one. It was like the one that came out after that had the license with the players. So like Joe Montana was in it, and like Bo Jackson was banned. Like you couldn't use Bo Jackson because he was too good. Because like, no he was too good. Yeah, that. you couldn't stop him. Yeah, no one can use him. Yeah, same thing with Barry Sanders. Like you can't use the Lions. Too mm-hmm. good. Um, but those were the only other football games I played. Yeah. Um. All right, and now we can move on to basketball. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, NBA 2K is probably uh, one of my most played series of all time just because of how many hours I put into 2K when I was younger. Uh, From 2K11 to 2K18, I bought every single one, and probably 2K11 to 2K14 probably was one of my most played games every year, like that, whatever year it came out playing my career mode I played so much of and me and my neighbor shout out to my neighbor he's now in jail 
uh, Mike Keller. Yeah, he was kind of a kind of an odd kid, but one of those like you know like the neighbor kids, like oh I just play with him because my neighbor. Like, you remember that when we were younger? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and him would play like NBA Two K almost like every single day. I remember coming home from because Two K Eleven came out in twenty ten, so we were freshman in high school it was our freshman year and i remember we'd ride the bus home and he'd be like yo 2k tonight like, yeah of course and he would come over and we'd just play 2k for like hours and we would get to the point where we like we made a t i remember sitting in biology class one day we made a tier system for each player and we're like we're gonna create like we tiered up every single player in the game and we're like all right we're gonna use custom teams where you you're allowed to get like two two players from this tier, one player from this tier, and we had like a dra- oh my god, we went all out. And then when two K twelve came out, they added like um a bunch of cla- a bunch of more classic teams, and it was so much fun. And uh and I love basketball, so like I played so much two K. But then it got to the point with like the VC and all that where I'm like, yeah, I'm good with this. And now the game's just in a terrible state, and people don't really like it. But I do still watch this YouTuber called Click Productions, and he does like phenomenal work with nba 2k and it's so funny and it's great oh yeah nba 2k what about you guys yeah uh, i played a lot of nba 2k as well sean um i went through a stretch where i was really playing that almost every year um my peak i would say was probably like nba 2k 9 through 12 i think kevin garnett um cover 2k 9 yeah and i remember the the theme song on that it was like 2k 2k you said did you say 2k 12 yeah. uh 2k 12 i think was my last one yeah do you remember the theme song of that we're playing basket yeah they had that and all that and they had the weird cell shaded players would come out and it was so weird yeah dude it it was great um but the reason why i stopped playing that game was because they got rid of my beloved crew mode crew mode was was oh, a yeah. thing for me me my brother and our friend daniel you would make your my player, you would power them up by doing that mode, you would make them super overpowered, and then what you would do is you would go on um, uh, crew mode. You would create your own team, you'd get to name them, you'd get to design the jerseys. It was really in-depth. Like We had Ohio State looking jerseys and colors. It was super awesome. Um, and then you would just go in and match make and it would be like your three against another team with their created team and they would have three or four or, or whatever. Um, the other players were AI on the field, uh, on the court, excuse me. And uh, yeah, you would just play against their created team like three on three, but it was five on five, but you know what I'm saying? And it was just so fun. Those games were really competitive and really fun. And then there was a lot of shit talk afterwards too. Oh, we'd be messaging each other. Oh, it was toxic. It was good times, but they got rid of that, I think, they, in 12 or 13. Yeah, they basically brought it back with, like, my park. And, like, now it's, like, yeah. it's so different, though, now. And, like, but you now have, the like, games like, themselves suck. I know. So. Well, the games are still play good, but it's just, like, there's so much, like, you have so much, like, it's so catered towards microtransactions to, like, level up your player. And there's, like, meta builds now. It's, like, you can't just play the way you want to play. it's like oh you have to play you have to be a meta build you have to th- this is what your height this is what your height has to be your stats have to be this this and this it's like oh my gosh um yeah, Hodge, what about you with basketball games i know you're not the biggest basketball guy but what about you yeah i've never played uh any of the 2k games i've never cared uh but i did two basketball games that i played the most was i talked about it when we did a i think our multiplayer episode it was nba jam i played the living shit out of those games the og one and the arcade yeah, yeah. one um, and then NBA street was the other one that I played a lot of way back in the day. Um, just, it felt more fun. I was always more of an arcadey basketball player over simulation, which, uh, is pretty much the case with all of them except for football. I was more into the simulation, but baseball, I definitely, I think I like arcadey more same with basketball. Um, so yeah, I always, I always took, I always liked uh, NBA street and jam more than uh 2k i never played those at all so with nba street i ne- i played the first and second one at my cousin's house he had them and i i felt i'm like these games are awesome so then i rented 2k i mean 2k nba street v3 but i rented it for gamecube and they had the mario luigi and peach team that was like that blew my mind i couldn't believe it and i was playing like a game with like it was like i had mario luigi and peach versus like carmelo anthony um like Carmelo Anthony, like um, I'm trying to think who else was in that. Um, 
Karan Butler was in that. It was just like I'm like Mario. It was so, but Mario's still in the regular art style as Mario. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't change it in the art. It was so funny. I remember doing that, and like you could use them like in regular modes and every single mode. It was great. Um, another basketball game I played a lot of was um, well, didn't play a lot of. I played it was Mario Hoops three on three on the DS. It was like not even a real basketball game. It was like literally like you would dunk it and it the amount of points you got depended on how many coins you had. But the best part about this game is they had Final Fantasy characters in the game. They had black, they had like chocobos were in the game, they had moogles in the game, and they had like the black and white mage in the game. You could use them as characters. No idea why they were in the game. I think I'm pretty sure Square Enix like published it. It was so weird, but it was Mario Hoops 3 and 3 for the original DS. Controls were horrendous, but it was it was a fun game. Like I, I played it. I, I think I got it for like Christmas one year. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember you just like tap the screen a lot you like, to dribble the ball. And then uh, Wii Sports Resort playing basketball. We used to do the three point contest a lot in that. But other than that, the controls were horrendous. Um, yeah, Midnight, any other games for you? Did you play any NBA Live? No, I never played NBA Live. That was the inferior product. Um, it was funny. They tried to make a comeback and like they kept delaying oh it. I think they came out with like 19 and nobody liked it. And then they yeah, just Kyrie gave up. Irving was on the cover and it was like horrendous, I heard. Yeah, but there was actually I very briefly played like an NCAA basketball game, like on like on like the PlayStation one oh, or something. Yeah, I forget it, because they had so many different ones. They had like NCAA hoops, they had ESPN college, like they had like ESPN 2K hoops. Um, the last college game they made was NCAA 09 and had Blake Griffin on the cover for when he played at Oklahoma. That was the last. Yeah. One. It's funny, like I got into college basketball way before college football, but I never played a college basketball game. Yeah, college basketball is, is awesome with March Madness and stuff. The only yeah, thing that sucks is that show. the only thing that sucks is my beloved Buckeyes are just almost never really good at basketball. So that makes it kind of hard for me to get into because it's like I could watch them get stomped out, but uh, or I could go play a game. You know, <laughs> I think I'll probably play a video game. I don't know. The, the, yeah, it was interesting, but yeah, there's been a college basketball game in almost it's going to be twenty five years. Yeah. No, sorry, fifteen years. I apologize. Yeah, but that's it for me on the basketball. Yeah, that's that's about it. Anything anything else? Uh now we can move on to uh hockey. Now for hockey, I have never played a hockey game. Like ever. Never. Never yeah. played an NHL game, never played an NHL 2K, never never any I know everyone's like, oh NHL 93, it's like the greatest game of all time. Or is it 94? Whatever game it is. It's like that's ah, the greatest sports game ever. It's like, yeah, I never played it, sorry. I've never played an NHL game, so you guys take the floor. This is going to be the Hodge topic because I, like Sean, have barely played like any hockey games ever. I'm not a massive hockey guy in real life, uh, although my dad played hockey uh, when he was younger. And as I understand it, I, he was actually pretty good is what, is yeah, what I've heard. This, much but. to the chagrin of my father, I've never played. I never even played. I, I've ice skated once in my life, almost broke my ankle. Shout yeah. out to Astro, Astro Pirate King. I told him that story because he asked me about ice skating once told him that story and he laughed hodge get it um yeah i played this i played nhl a lot back uh uh back between like oh eight and 14 i believe is kind of but that's when the blackhawks were winning stanley cups every other year so i was really into 2013 beat the Bruins. yeah that was the greatest 17 seconds of my life um, which is a reference to the fact that they scored, they were down, I think two to one and they scored two yeah, goals scored in, two goals in 17, in 17 seconds. seconds to win the game in game six in Boston. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I played mostly cause I bought 10 and 11 because the, uh, it was Kane and Taze that were on the covers of those. So obviously I wanted Blackhawks ones. And then I actually didn't buy uh 16, which also had Jonathan Taze on the cover because it was supposed to be him and Kane both hoisting up the cup together, but then there was a fake rape accusation against Kane, oh, so yeah. they took him off the yeah. cover. And so I got so pissed about that that I just didn't buy the game. Plus, the cover looked really, like, really staged. Because you know how, like, they used to just be basically a screen of them from the game, like, in a pose, like, because they're running with the ball or they have their stick or, what, like, whatever sport it is? Yeah. 
But then they just became posed ones. And I was like, these don't look as good. And so the cover, it was just a very fake looking Kane and Taze like like lifting the cup. And I was like, that looks like shit. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> EA, EA changed the way they did covers like around that era for Madden as well. I, mm-hmm. I'll never forget the Tom Brady Madden cover is horrendous. I gotta look at that one. I think it's like I'm Madden. I'm about to look it up. It's like Madden 18. It's horrendous. Or Madden 19. I don't know. I don't remember which one it is, but it's horrendous. Let me oh, see. it's 18. Yeah, it's literally just him standing there. What's wrong with it? He's he's yelling. He's passionate. What's wrong with it? That's know. the special edition. Yeah, I, Look, that's the goat edition. Look at the normal one. Yeah. Oh, Look there's the a different one. one. Yeah. Well, I don't. I'm only seeing the special for some reason. Just took yeah. type in Madden Brady cover <laughs> in Google. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, isn't it so bad? Yeah, he looks like depressed <laughs> on the yeah. normal one. Yeah, yeah, it's he looks really depressed. bad. It's so bad. Yeah, he looks good on the goat edition. They, that should have just been the normal cover. Yeah, goat editions. At it was. Least it was. Okay, but... It was weird. They they started changing their covers back to kind of the way they were, but there was like the Antonio Brown cover from Madden was also really weird. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah I, guess, I I remember that one was like the first one where I was like, "What is this?" Like, it's just a, a yellow background with him smiling. It was just, it was so bad. The uh, the Madden twenty four deluxe edition cover looks pretty cool with the Josh Allen like literally in the stands with the fans. Like the fans are all grabbing him and stuff. That's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah. sidetrack. NHL. Uh-huh. But yeah, Anything so else? that so yeah, that was really I stopped basically around then. I just kind of got and the games just got worse. They just it's it's the same thing with Madden. They just kept getting worse and worse, and I just stopped giving a shit about them. Uh, but the other NHL game I played was also an official licensed one called Three on Three NHL Arcade. It was an Xbox Live arcade game, and it was oh, just like, I remember this game. Yeah, it was a very it was like a big head kind of uh, arcadey yeah. three on three game where you get like power ups and stuff. And me and my friends would play it in college all the time, and it was a lot of fun. But I remember seeing clips about that game. Man. Yeah, that's really that's really all I have with NHL is I haven't played it in years, but I was really into it for a good chunk of time. But then I yeah, I just kind of fell off when the games got worse. What what do they have to do to bring you back, Hodge? I'm just curious. Uh, maybe once the take one, ten years off, huh? Take ten years off, like like yeah. NCAA football. Uh, once they're good enough with Connor Bedard being the best guy in the league again, then uh, once he's on the cover, I'll buy one. <laughs> Give it a try again. <laughs> there you go. But, All right, I guess we're done with hockey. Yeah. No mutant league hockey for anyone. No, yeah, no, I mean, I'm not going to have much to say about the next one either, to be honest with you. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, next up, we're going to talk about football, international, or soccer, as we call it in um, one. America. I've never played a FIFA game, but my only memories with FIFA are um, kids in college were addicted to this game. Like, we go play FIFA, and everyone would run to a room, and everyone's sitting there like, ah, FIFA. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, um, yeah, I'm going to play Final Fantasy VII for the 20th time. Um <laughs> No, but yeah, FIFA, I never played. Um, my cousins used to play it all the time. I remember I rented, I did try to rent one once. It was like the FIFA 2010 World Cup game. I tried to rent, and when I put it into my PS3, it was like the disc couldn't be read, so I brought it back, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, that was a sign. Uh, I'm not into soccer at all, so FIFA. I'm not either. I think soccer is just boring. I don't, I, I mean, I guess I kind of get it. I coach really soccer. Passionate. I, I, I coach it. I, 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 mean, I played it as a kid. I played like YMCA like, league. I was like, on soccer. I had fun. Not into like the professional soccer game. Not going to the revolution game every week. MLS reference. Yeah. My, my only soccer is uh, back in the day, there used to be a challenge where you land at Pleasant Park in Fortnite and kick a soccer goal. And then, um, and then there was a uh, Rocket League. Uh, Rocket league. Yeah. And then same with, yeah, Fall Guys. There's a soccer level with Fall Guys, but that's really. All I have for soccer. <laughs> oh, you never, you never played the Mario soccer games. No, I, that's one I never. I know, like played. people. That's like another thing people like adored. I never played them. They're like, oh, they're the greatest Mario sports game ever. I'm like, have you played Mario baseball? Yeah, I've never, I've never yeah. done. It's like the only Mario sport game I haven't played is Mario soccer. Uh, was there Mario basketball? Uh, hoops three on three. I mentioned it, but it's not. Re- it's not like a real basketball game. It's like yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, I've I've never played. I played Mario like tennis and golf and stuff like that. But 
never and baseball, but never any basketball or soccer games. And speaking of tennis, since we're done with soccer, since we don't talk about that, we're going to move yeah, on to tennis. Sorry, sorry soccer fans. That's yeah. all you get from us. <laughs> yeah, sorry, move on to tennis. I know, right? Um, tennis. I have played two tennis games in my – well, two tennis series in my life. I've played Mario Tennis, so I've played the original one. On, I didn't play, like, the Game Boy one, which I supposed to be, like, an RPG, which is, like, kind of sounds awesome. Um but I sounds yeah, awesome like, to me. like RPG mechanics to it. Like I heard, hmm. like I don't know, it sounds cool. I kind of want to get my hands on one. Um, I played Mario Tennis for the N sixty four. My dentist used to have it in his office, and I like, loved it because my sister had like four cavities, and she got them filled in like the span of a week. And I was at that age where I couldn't be. Well, I was like three years younger than her, so I'm like not even in kindergarten. So I would go there and play Mario uh, Mario Tennis. It was great. Uh, and then the Mario Tennis for the GameCube was phenomenal like absolutely love that game like i play that game so much to the point where again that same my my friend who that same person we play mario baseball with and we do seven game series we used to just play like so much mario tennis like all night and i would it was so much fun and like the roster was expansive and they had a ton of mini games and the, the courts were really cool too because it was like all arcadey and it would be like whoa like the court would like flip upside down and stuff would be fire going around it was weird because Mario was the ref, but you could have like Mario playing as well. Um, it was really weird. And uh, shout out to Wall Luigi made his first ever appearance in Mario Tennis. Shout out to the Wall Luigi man, the Mario Tennis pro. Um, unfortunately, he's reg- regulated to all sports games and party games. No mainline games for him. Uh, and then the other tennis series I've ever played is I played virtual tennis like a couple times virtual tennis i rented it and i actually really liked it and i was like i convinced myself i was gonna get the next one and then it came around and i'm like yeah i'm not getting the next one virtual tennis uh there was a there was a point in time when my mom's a huge tennis player that she loves tennis um and so she was really disappointed that me and my sister didn't pick up tennis my sister tried and then she's like yeah i'm good um so but like we tried I'm like, oh we're gonna watch wimbledon in the u.s i'm like yeah no shout out to roger federer tennis yeah, I, I don't have much experience with uh, tennis games, except for, of course, Wii Sports Tennis. Played a little oh, bit of that. Right. That was kind of fun yeah, yeah. with the family and, that. you know, stuff like that. Good times with doing that with the little Wii mode out there. Just pop, 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 pop. You know, good times. But uh, other than that, I'm not a huge tennis guy. I don't watch it really uh, on TV and haven't really played any of the games pretty much. Yeah, it's just uh, Mario Tennis and Wii Sports is really all I have. I don't have anything else to add. Mario Tennis has always been a really fun one. But, yeah, I'm like, I don't care about tennis. I've never cared about tennis. But the Mario ones have always been the most fun. Hodge, who's your go-to Mario Tennis player? Go, right now. Shy Guy. Your head. Shy Guy? All right. I love Shy Guy. Guess mine. Guess mine. Waluigi? No. <laughs> Yoshi. Yes. It is Yoshi, yeah. Nice. Uh, but shout out to Mario to um, N64. Also introduced Waluigi Mario Tennis. They also had Donkey Kong Junior. That's like the last actual like appearance of like DK Junior, like the way he looks. So that was so that was such a weird character to have in that because like he's not in games. Um, all right, that's that's tennis. Our favorite tennis games. Woo! All right, Ooh. next up we got golf. And I'm gonna throw this to Midnight. Midnight, what's your golf game history here? Yeah, I actually did uh, the Tiger Woods PGA Tour games from Electronic Arts. Uh, I did play those for a couple years and had some fun playing with my brother and stuff. You know, we going back and forth. Um, those games were pretty fun. Um, I don't know. I don't remember why I enjoyed it so much, but I did because they're really basic when you get down to it. Just kind of line up the shots and and kind of do the thing. But um, I did briefly play those for a couple years. That was a thing I enjoyed. Um, you know, working on your game, trying to get those stroke counts down, get those birdies. Um, funny enough, I actually uh, played on on Yakuza 3. They had a golf mini game in that uh, where you had to play against one of like the city council people or whatever. And uh, I re- I got a birdie on one of the the holes that I took a screenshot of uh, of Kiryu celebrating and it says birdie. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, shout out to uh, golf video games. But yeah, Tiger Woods PGA Tour games. Played those for a few years, and I did enjoy them, but I eventually fell off. They eventually ripped him off the cover when he had a scandal and stuff. So, yeah, good they stuff. Put, they put Rory McIlroy on. Briefly, yeah. I don't know yeah. who's on the cover now. I don't know if they're they, – I they think Tiger's – is right? Tiger back on the cover? 
Can they put Tiger back on? Or is he like doing Tiger 2K now? I don't know. Hodge, what about you? I know you had mentioned uh, Mario Golf. Yeah, Mario Golf briefly, uh, you know, playing Wii Sports Golf a lot, of course. Actually, most of my golf, I so I played, <laughs> there's a joke one I was going to put, say also there's this old Flash mini golf game from way back in the day. I played the Ooh, crap out yes. of that one. Oh my yeah. god, I play that game so much. I, I, I learned how to get a hole-in-one on every single hole. Uh, it was, it was awesome. But, uh, anyway, uh, most of my game is actually motion. Like I, I played the Tiger Woods ones. I played, I think I played Rory McIlroy the one year they did him also, but, um, it's always been like motion controls, like Wii Sports or VR. I played everybody's golf VR on PS4 and that game was really fun. Like I had so much fun with it. And there's also on uh, the quest, there's a, I think it's a top golf branded mini golf game and it's really fun and so i've it's, golf has been more of because i actually like playing golf in real life too but um yeah it's mostly been so it's mostly like motion control golf games is what i play and i find them to be a lot of fun but yeah i don't yeah, um i was gonna say i just don't have i don't have much outside of that though yeah um i played a lot of mario golf when i was younger a lot of uh toad soul tour on gamecube um the 3ds game i can't remember what it was called it was actually a really good mario golf game like it was like phenomenal like so much better than i ever expected it would be um that was a lot of fun but my favorite golf video game memory is i used to want to everyone used to sleep over at like my house because everyone just like i don't know people like being at my house but there'd be occasional times i'd sleep over other kids houses i'll never forget i used to wake up and you guys i'm like i'm an early riser and, like, it doesn't matter what time I go to bed, I, I get up around the same time. And I remember waking up at, like, 5 a.m. And everyone else is still sleeping. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I played, like, I think it was, like, 48 holes or, like, I played so many rounds of golf on, like, Wii. And I was just like, it's like, hey, guys. And then, like, someone wake up. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm on my 48th hole of golf here. Just running around, you know, playing golf. But, yeah, that was my big thing with golf. I'm not a big golf guy. I'm actually going to golf for the first time ever in a couple weeks when i'm in hawaii so um oh, we'll enjoy that well i'm gonna make my brother-in-law like he's gonna he, he goes oh it should only take a couple hours i go you know i'm golfing right like that's gonna take <laughs> forever um so yeah should be fun but that is golf and that's gonna kind of bring us to our last category here just like other sports games um so like anything you didn't mention there is one thing that just came to my mind that I'm going to mention in other sports, but it can fall under the basketball category, but I, I'm just going to put it here because I forgot to mention it. And that is Nicktoons basketball on the PC. I got this at the Scholastic Book Fair in third grade. Uh, this roster for Nicktoons basketball is outrageous. Like there are some deep pulls in this game. Like you have like the all grown up Rugrats characters. So like Tommy is like an, is like a teenager like Chucky is a teenager, <laughs> but then you have like Ren and Stimpy, and then you have like the Angry Beavers. You have Jenny, the teenage robot, is in this game along with Danny Phantom. Like the ro- there's like 35 players in this Nicktoons PC basketball game that I played way too much of, and the courts were really cool because you had like Jimmy Neutron's like house. I don't know Nicktoons basketball. If you played it, you know. If you know, you know. What about you guys for other sports games? Hodge? Um, I was going – the only one I really thought of was uh, – actually, <laughs> there's one that I played when I was a little kid. It was uh, – was it Labonte Stock Car Racing? It was a racing game. But uh, the only other one that I played recently or really that much of that was – another sport was a game called Jonah Lomu's Rugby Challenge. He's a New Zealand rugby player. And this was back when I played rugby, and so I loved just doing all this stuff. And th- it was actually a really fun Xbox 360 rugby game. And it was like it was pretty basic because obviously rugby's it's internationally it's huge. So I'm surprised there's not more games for it, but uh, it's obviously a pretty niche game, especially in America. So I would play it basically with like one other rugby friend. And it was it was a lot of fun. It was a pretty good simulation for rugby. But yeah, that's really the only other non other sport game that I could think of that I've played and enjoyed. Hodge, right. I have a question. Hodge. Yeah. Do you remember Fairly Odd Parents? Yeah. Do you remember the kid AJ? The really smart kid? 
Is the he the one with the braces or is he the black one? No, he's the he's the black kid. Okay, black one. No. Yeah, he's in Nicktoons basketball. <laughs> and so is Tack from Tack the Power of Juju's in that game too. Which is Some like random that's shit. His, that's, yeah, that's the roster. All right. Midnight, take it away. Yeah, I got a couple games um, that I played, and they're all kind of like fighting games. I played uh, the UFC games, uh, like UFC Undisputed and stuff. Um, those games were pretty fun. Cre- I like to create your own fighter mode, and then you kind of rise up the ranks and try to win the belt or whatever, the title. Um, that was really cool. Um, so I played those for a while and enjoyed that. I also played the boxing ones, the fight night, like fight night round three or whatever it was. Um, those were really good. They had awesome graphics. That's what I was, remember them. Yeah. I remember the graphics. Cause that was like a huge thing when like PS3, 360, everyone's like, you got to play the fight night game. It looks like it's like you're watching a real pay-per-view event. Dude, the graphics were awesome. And then they had like this thing, like when you would get a really good punch, it would like kind of slow down and like kind of show like, I think it, I think I remember like it showed kind of like skeleton stuff every now and then, like when you would rock them, uh, maybe I'm making that up and I'm thinking of a different game. Um, but I know that like, they would kind of slow down and dramatize like the big, you hits might be you thinking really of Mortal Kombat them. for the bone part. <laughs> no, I'm not thinking of Mortal Kombat, <laughs> but, uh, they definitely did something like when you got a really big shot and rock. I do remember the slow motion down, punches. Yeah. 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 Um, and it was a lot of fun. Again, create your own fighter, build them up the ranks. That's my type of thing. It's like RPG. Um, and also as a youth, this isn't really a sport, but I'm going to throw it out there. I used to play a lot of the wrestling games, the WCW versus NWO world tour on the N64. That was my jam right there, man. Just messing people up, hitting them with the, like the big, the big show, hitting them with the big, uh, power bomb and stuff. Good stuff. Hulk Hogan was in that game. Can't beat it. Um, but that's pretty much it for me, man. UFC fight night and some wrestling games. Yeah, the uh, UFC game, I, the very first one, I remember playing that freshman year in college. I wasn't very good at it. I just remember I I never cared about UFC, but I knew who Brock Lesnar was, so I would play as Brock Lesnar. But uh, the um, – goddamn, what was the other sport? You, oh, wrestling. I was never – I was a 90s kid, so I just saw wrestling everywhere. I was never a big fan of it, but I saw it everywhere. So I do remember playing some of the games, and they were pretty fun back in the day. Mm-hmm. I've never watched wrestling. Couldn't tell you a wrestler. Maybe John Cena. That's like the only one I really know. You can't see him. Oh, yeah, because he does the... Da, 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 da. That's how I know John Cena. Like, the, the song, yeah. right? Yeah, the song. Yeah. Um, one last game I do want to mention for other sports. Um, oh, my gosh. And I just lost it. It was on the tip. It was on my head. And now I can't even think about it. Wow. So it must have not been memorable. must have not been important. Griff Ball from Halo. Yes, sorry, that was it. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, Blitzball yeah. from Final Fantasy X. Blitzball from Final... That's what, that's what I wanted to mention. Blitzball from Final Fantasy X. Uh, no, I didn't want to mention that. Oh, that'd be cool. Cool spinoff game. Blitzball, let's do it. Floating in the water, throwing the ball around. <laughs> I don't know you, anything about that. Dude. You'll, 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 you'll get to 10. it. You'll get to it. You'll get to it. I doubt it. I, I don't Probably. think I want to play Final Fantasy X. I heard it sucked. Uh, all right, and with that note, we're going to um, end the episode. So thanks for coming. All right. So that's the end of our sports conversation, I, ta- I take it, guys? Yeah, I want to, again, we're just going to apologize to all our international listeners for the the football. No, no. Um, the football. football. I apologize yeah, for no nothing. Soccer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I apologize well, on behalf of everyone here. Watch some real sports, all right, people? Whoa! Amer- American football is better, okay? But, um... But no, yeah, I, I know, you know, soccer, of course, football, as they call it in the world, is like the biggest sport in the world. Uh, people love that in Latin America, South America, Europe. It's huge. Africa, they love that shit. So shout out to that. Um, but yeah, so that does it, guys, for our sports conversation. Let us know in the comments below what are your favorite sports games, anything that we missed. Go ahead and feel free to reminisce and let us know. We read every comment and we appreciate you. But that brings us to the end of the show. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. It's been a great show, everyone. So let's go around the horn here and we'll do some final thoughts. Uh, Hodge, final thoughts. Anything you want to say before we get up out of here for episode 12? Um, No, I just I, I forgot how many sports games. Like, I don't play them that much anymore, but I forgot how much I used to love these games. So hopefully NCAA comes out. It's awesome and I get back into it. <clears> oh <throat> yeah it's gonna be awesome um and sean final thoughts for you sir great job with the awesome sports topic today 
what do you want to say before we get out of here? I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, next episode, I will not be in this room. I will be somewhere different on a remote island. And How it's remote? not remote. It's not remote <laughs> because there, 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 a lot of people will live there. I will yeah. be on an yeah. island, though. And I, I will be the closest I ever am. Well, I can't say ever. We'll be very close to the continent of Australia. Still not close, though, but I will be close. And Japan, and Japan. Shout out to Chris, our boy Chris yeah. from Australia. Shout out to him. Yeah. Japan, we don't care about. Birthplace of the weebs. Get out of can't here, wait. Japan. Can't wait to go to Japan. Um, Japan's, Japan's cool. All right. And uh, yeah, that's it. My final thoughts are College Football 25 is back, baby. We're so back. I can't wait. I'm going to be grinding hard and heavily in all those modes and uh, look forward to hearing me talk about College Football 25 and the what I'm playing section going forward, although it'll be brief if I'm talking about it for the fourth time. All right, guys. It's been a great episode, I think. Thank you guys for tuning in. Leave likes, leave comments. We appreciate your support, as I always say. Uh, drop a sub if you're on YouTube and you're not subscribed. Go ahead and subscribe. Man, we're, we want to get to 100 subs maybe one of these days. We're getting there. We're getting closer. We're in the 60s, I think, now. But we appreciate you. This has been episode number 12, Games Over Plastic. Please clap, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get about it here. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Basketball is completely different than football. <laughs>